Hello, welcome back to the Student Pages podcast. Today I'm joined by Marie Abjuropoulos. How are you, Marie? I'm doing great. Wow, you did like an amazing job at saying my last name. Like usually it's been butchered my entire life. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm sure that's not actually how you pronounce What's the proper Greek pronunciation? Abjuropoulos, but Abjuropoulos works too. I'll, t- I'll take it. As is the nature of a podcast, you know, we, we can talk about whatever, but I was going to start off with a little quiz. So okay. I'm going to give you three minutes. To, you're from Thunder Bay, Ontario, right? Yeah. I, have you ever been there? My answer is, my guess is probably no. I've never been to Thunder Bay. No. What, what, do you like it? Is it a fun place? Yeah, I lived there until I was 20 years old. It basically breeds like hunters, fishermen, outdoorsy people. Tons of NHL hockey players have come out of Thunder Bay because it's so bloody cold in the winter. It gets to like minus 40. Um, but it was a great place to grow up, for sure. Um, I've, I've just played outside all the time. So a lot of my memories with my friends are just, you know, outdoor adventuring, which is totally fine by me because it's tons to do outdoors, which is definitely um, one of my passions. Did you do like hunting and fishing growing up? Oh, fishing was a major part of like family bonding and hanging out with friends. And then into my... Um, you know, when I was allowed to go fishing on my own and operate a boat with my girlfriends, we would do 80s dress-up fishing derbies. So we would wear the most ridiculous wigs and no boys were allowed. We would operate all our own fishing boats and all of us were in like 80s onesies or I don't know, one would look like Jane Fonda. It was ridiculous. And so all the other like, you know, older male fishermen that were like floating by would look at us like we all had six heads. Maybe they loved it. Maybe they were confused. Maybe a bit of both. But lots of positive memories growing up. That's so funny. That's what is that? What a girls' night is like in in Thunder Bay. Yeah, what's a, what's a fishing derby. Is that a specific, is that just you go fishing or is it? Well, there's like there's like a grand prize of like maybe it's a cash amount or maybe it's a gift certificate for like an amazing fishing rod from like the local store. It, it all really depends, actually. Thunder Bay is on Lake Superior, which is um, one of the great lakes in Canada, and it's the biggest one. Freshwater lake, you can even catch salmon in there. Um, tons of fun. Um, that's where the Edmund Fitzgerald sank uh, with, like, you know, an over 50 foot wave back in the day. So it's almost like an ocean. The lake is so big, but it's surrounded by a bunch of teeny tiny lakes, too. So, you know, when we were unattended young adults, we stuck to the smaller lakes. Um, <laughs> but uh, going in Lake Superior is pretty cool. It feels like being baptized. <laughs> well, it sounds like you know lots about where you're from. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to set a timer for okay. three minutes and we're going to see how many questions you can get right. Okay. I reckon you'll do fine. I reckon. Go. Okay. First question. Thunder Bay is composed of which two formerly separate cities? Um, Port Arthur and um, Port William. Fantastic. Well done. That's one right. Okay. Next question. What musical instrument was invented in Thunder Bay? Oh my God. I have no idea. I'm a drummer, so I've been so busy doing that my whole life. Something was invented music was in Thunder Bay? I thought they were all just hockey players and you name it. I don't know. Well, you tell me. It was the first of its kind, but apparently the synth. What? Yeah. That's so, like, refined for some place like Thunder Bay, you know, northern Ontario. Thank you for teaching me something. Cool. There you go. Okay, next question. Um, what is the city of Thunder Bay's motto, which is written on the logo? Something about the lake. Yeah, superior something. Um, everyone in my hometown is going to hate me. I hope they never hear this. Something about being superior. What is it? Tell me. It's superior by nature. That's what it is. Okay, I see. I got the first word right. Does that count for like half a point? I'll give you, okay. I'll give you half a point for that. Thanks. That's, I, I love that as a motto. I, I think I'm going to start using that as my motto. Superior by nature. I mean, yeah, because it's on Lake Superior. So it's like, you know, play on words. I should have known that. I haven't been home in a while. <laughs> I just got that one, yeah. Um, okay, next one. True or false? Um, Thunder Bay has one of the largest established communities of Finnish-speaking people outside of Finland. Is that true or false? Yes, true. Correct, it is true. So they got, you got two and a half, right, out of four. Um, okay, next one. Uh, what is the largest theatre in Thunder Bay? Uh, Cineplex Odeon, or do you mean, you mean like movie theatre? or I mean, um... like uh, theatrical, I mean like plays. Either Magnus Theatre, because that's where I did my internship, or the auditorium. It was Magnus Theatre, so well done, you got it. I did my um, internship there, yep. What is, okay, can you name any, just name any sports team from Thunder Bay, like, that's based in Thunder Bay? The Pirates are from Thunder Bay. They're professional hockey players. Um, the Thunder Bay Whiskey Jacks? 
that's like a, a baseball team, a local oh, one. I'll take your word for it. I didn't even have that one on my list. Okay. okay. Uh, you're going to get through all of them, I reckon, if, I, if we carry on through. Um, actually, uh, last question, last question. A part of Mars is named after Thunder Bay, true or false? Part of Mars? Yeah. Like the planet? No, it's, yeah, the planet. A part of Mars, the planet, is named after Thunder Bay, true or false? I mean, the fact that you came up with that question, I, you know more than me, I'm assuming. So I'm going to say true, and that's just a wild ass guess. You got true just as the timer went off. Um, I, unfortunately, it's false. <laughs> okay, I'm like. Cool. No, there's a part. There's a part of um, Mars that's named after Winnipeg, but but not uh, Thunder Bay. Uh, Winnipeg's four hours. That's another half point for me. Come on. <laughs> but um, yeah. So you got. I think you got. You got the one about the two cities. You got one half. I mean, you didn't get the one about the synth. You got the one about no. Finnish people. You got the like, one. Like I thought, synth is were only playing played in like shakespearean times who knew since since they're like the like like they used in electronic music oh i'm thinking of like or like a harp or something got it okay right yeah i'm a rock and roll drummer that's where my brain stays with like you know drums bass guitar electric guitar. are you what i i, I play the drums as well oh yeah how long have you been playing the drums for um uh, since i was 15. nice you ever do yep. like jazz or just you just play rock just rock and roll. What's your favorite band? It's hard to pick one. Um, I'm going to say, I mean, Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac are like my jam. Gord Downey is amazing Canadian iconic singer. He passed away from cancer um, not long ago, but his, his music is incredible if you've never checked it out. There's one album called Your Favorites, and it's basically all my favorite ones, but there's so many albums. Go check that out. Um, I love CCR. Oh my god, the list goes on. The Stones, ACDC. There's been a question I've been asking my friends recently, and people, opinions are divided. Who do you think's better? Right, the Beatles or, or David Bowie? That's so funny you mentioned David Bowie, because I just watched the movie The Labyrinth the other day. Remember that movie? And David Bowie played played bad guy? I haven't seen the... it, no. What? Okay, so... Oh my god. It's an old, old movie about this girl who has to babysit her little brother. And she's tired of it. And she says, I wish the Goblin King would just take you away. And David Bowie plays the Goblin King. Suddenly the baby disappears and David Bowie appears. And she's got to find her way through this labyrinth and meet all these crazy characters to get to the castle to get her baby brother back. And of course, David Bowie has all these like music video parts in the movie in these like crazy outfits and, you know, his packed jock crotch and his pants and his mullet hairdo and. It's it's an iconic movie that I saw when I was a kid. It's old, but it's good. I'm gonna look gotta it watch up. it. What role does David Bowie play in that film? What, like, what he plays the Goblin King, who captures oh, the kid. God. He's the lead bad guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is like a crazy film. I'll definitely watch this. Yeah, and there's amazing people attached to it too. Is it a kids' film? Yeah, I watched it with a couple kids the other day, and they got terrified. Um, but it was, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, it was just made a long time ago, so. You know, the graphics are a bit different than they are now. So sometimes oh, it's a bit frightening to we watch, but it's good. It's got Jennifer Connolly in it from. Um, yeah, and I think who directed it? Is it Jim Davis? What is his name again? Jim Henson. Jim Henson, that's right. Henson. Sorry, my mind is in 10 different places. Um, yes, highly recommend. It's in, like an iconic one. Oh, and Jim Henson did the. Oh, the Sesame Street and the Muppets. Oh, that's crazy. Yes, yes. So the, there's like these crazy <laughs> characters. That are, because of course this is the, like before the times of CG and all these amazing graphics that we have nowadays. So it's the puppetry is insane of these little characters that pop up inside the labyrinth along her way to either help her or make her very confused and send her in the wrong direction. Um, I love that movie. I forgot that um, David Bowie did, had some acting roles because he was in Zoolander as well. And oh of, yeah, that's right. I was yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, you, you got into acting quite late because you mm -hmm. started about 21. So is that because you were kind of all into outdoorsy stuff before that and you never really thought about acting or did you were kind of into it as a kid but you never really thought you could do it professionally or? After I graduated um, high school, I took television broadcast journalism in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I thought I wanted to do kind of what you're doing now for a living. And um, I did an internship at a, a news um, cast station in Thunder Bay. And I remember I had a really 
really positive experience there. It was a rock and roll station, so I was really into that. But um, my role was to um, tell local and regional, national, and worldwide news. And I remember I had a really positive story once about um, something that would really help, you know, young children in hospitals and stuff like that. And I remember asking my boss if I can air it. And I remember my boss telling me no, because only bad news is good news and newsworthy. And I'm like, great. So I quit. And she's like, well, well, so many women fought for your, fought for this position and you got it. I'm like, great. Then you won't have any trouble finding a replacement. So that was it for me. Um, I realized I couldn't, I didn't want to spend the rest of my career um, being the um, bearer of bad news, um, even though I think it's incredibly important, um, but it just wasn't for me. My heart called me to do something more creative, and at this point, I was playing drums, too, already, and I did some internships or whatever at Megan's Theatre, like we discussed before, and I finally found my calling. I, I went to Vancouver. I started playing drums. An agent um, scouted me and asked me, you know, he's like, you're probably really green. Have you ever done this before? And I said, no. And, you know, he signed me and I started auditioning for things. And the rest is kind of history. I moved to Los Angeles eventually and slept out of my car for a while and hey. auditioned for the role of uh, Octavia Blake in The 100. And they sent me right back to Canada. And there I was playing Octavia Blake um, up until March during the worldwide lockdown. And we filmed 100 episodes of The 100. It was uh, pretty remarkable. I made some pretty crazy decisions, but I'm glad I was a ballsy kid. Yeah, wow. I, I, that's so crazy. And everybody guessed that you were sleeping in your car in L.A. whilst you were like, looking for work. That's crazy. Yeah, with a Mastiff dog. It was uh, not very roomy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. And then, so how, so how do you feel like you've changed between being that kid uh, in sleeping in their car with a Mastiff dog and seven years down the line working on on the hundred um how do i think i've changed well i've grown up a lot i'm 34 now um so i feel like i grew up a lot with the character on tv and i learned a lot about myself and um i'm thankful i was as brave and maybe careless as i was back then because i don't think i would sleep in my car now especially with how uncertain this world is <laughs> um so i'm thankful for the roof over my head and all the blessings that i've received absolutely and for my health and even though I'm bored and feel like a housewife over here I'm super thankful that I'm healthy and I can FaceTime the people I love and you know I've learned how to garden pretty much freaking everything on the planet this year um but that's all right watching tomatoes go from green to red are kind of exciting too I guess <laughs> you've been gardening <laughs> yeah I made I planted my first vegetable garden this year um some are working some aren't but most of them are I think um, I make Greek salads 24-7 and Spanako pizza, which is my favorite Greek food. So it, I'm excited to be growing all the things for it now. And it skips me having to go to the grocery store with the stupid mask on. They're important. I totally support the mask. Everyone should wear them. <laughs> but, you know, it's an adjustment. You're like, okay, right. Keys, wallet, phone, mask when you leave the house. Just It's all learning, right? But it's so important for everybody else and ourselves. Do you ever make, uh, do you ever make gyros? I haven't made one from scratch yet, no. Oh, of course, because you've got to make the bread and everything as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm a great cook, baker, not so much. I put bread into the baking category. I wanted to ask you some, some hypothetical. I wanted to talk a little bit about The 100. Okay. Um, so, in The 100, obviously, you're sent from the Ark, the space station, housing um, those who escaped from the nuclear apocalypse on Earth to this radioactive earth that might be uninhabitable um and my question was going to be if you if you could design your own arc right your own space station what would it be like and who would be there with you if you're hiding out if i could design my own arc what would it have um it would definitely have a giant movie theater it would have a farm because you know let's not all starve to death that's no fun um it would have a jam space because I'm sure some of the people in the arc with me would know how to play the other instruments and we could start a band with a with a dance floor in front of it so then everybody else that doesn't know how to that isn't musically inclined can just go shred a rug for a minute everybody would have linen sheets because they keep you cool at night and uh, uh, they keep you cool at night in the summer and warm in the winter but maybe in space that wouldn't matter I don't know I've never been to real space before only on TV it doesn't really count and puppies everybody loves puppies does that cover it all? And a gym, yeah, maybe? Sounds amazing. No, all of that, all of that stuff sounds great. 
yeah. so you'd have, you'd have a like a place where you can jam out like a dance floor there'd be puppies presumably floating around <laughs> and then, and then puppies. Eat. yeah It'd be very very comfortable i love that sounds like the ultimate quarantine kind of there you go yeah perfect i don't know how you i don't know how you do that in space but that'd be amazing well you said this was a hypothetical question so that was my hypothetical answer Mm. if you were one of the last hundred people on earth and you didn't have to worry about surviving or radiation that's all taken care of where would you go chuck e cheese just kidding that's not my real answer um santorini greece for sure that's my happy place um it's to me the most beautiful and romantic greek island um on the planet and the sunsets are just insanely breathtaking and the people are wonderful and it's just a very zen place to be is your is your greek heritage like very important to you is there a kind of a community in thunder bay where that you hang out with or? yeah my greek heritage is totally important to me when i was a kid well not a kid i guess I don't know, when I started acting, whatever. To me, I was a kid then. Clueless. I remember my agent at the time, not my current agent, wanted me to change my last name because they said casting is having a hard time writing it down because it's 12 letters long. And I thought about it because my dad passed away when I was a kid. And I'm like, what would dad say about this one? Probably not be stoked. And I'm proud of being Greek. So I'm like, no, I'm not changing it to something like Smith or whatever. No judgment to the Smiths out there, but my true last name is you know, Aviropoulos, and um, I kept it. I'm really glad I did. It's important to me. I had I had a question. I, I looked on your IMDb, and I saw that you were in Fifty Fifty, and I remember seeing that film, but I can't. It was so long ago. I can't remember which. I, I can't remember seeing you in that film, but I love that film. I'm <laughs> at a dinner date with um, with the two main characters. It was one of the first jobs I got, really. Um, and Seth was super cool because uh, he ends up taking me home after date night. And um, I remember we had scripts and sides on the day. Um, and he literally ripped them up and had us improv the scenes. And uh, it was just a really fun exercise for me because typically, you know, writers like you to stick to whatever is written. But Seth just wanted to have fun with it. And it was just such a fun experience for me. And, and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Seth Rogen were just two wonderful guys to work with i have nothing but wonderful things to say that's amazing is that this is that this you were in this scene where um he he sort of decides he's going to use like being ill to pick up some girls at a bar is that yeah that one okay i thought so that's such a funny that was forever ago yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, that's that's so interesting i'm thank i I think we're just about done that's just about all this but thanks so much for um for talking to me that was such a fun interview thanks for talking to me